All right, I'm just gonna press record now so I don't forget again. Okay. Chat. Sounds good, Corbin. I'm waiting for it. I know, we missed you last week, Thomas. <clears throat> we had a fun experiment and now everyone wants me to uh, run away from exploding Mentos. <clears throat> I'm doing good. Forgive me if I munch on some cereal. I'm a little hungry. Um, well, no, because that's unsafe during uh, this quarantine time. I could have the virus. You don't know. Can we blow more stuff up? Um, yeah, probably in the coming weeks, not this week. I'll try and blow some stuff up. While I get access to an RPG. If you're talking about the gun, no. Uh, if you're talking about a role-playing game, sure, man, we can do that. <clears throat> Maybe we can like run a uh, a D and D session like one of those hundred man ones where last person standing wins. I just throw increasingly more zombies at you. I've not heard of the crooked man or the crooked. Okay. Uh, we'll get started in about four minutes, guys. Uh, this is an actual lecture this week. Last one, Sandy gets extra credit. Yeah. Oh, you guys are thinking like Minecraft. I'm I'm thinking D and D, my friends. What did we do last Zoom meeting? Uh, I did an experiment called the elephant toothpaste, but it was not as um, reactive as I would have liked it to be. Yeah, I blew stuff up. Exactly, Chrisia. <clears throat> I'll see if I can safely blow stuff up next time we do an experiment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, we got quite a few people here. Mm -hmm. 
Let me close my door in case my dad comes back and then starts yelling or something. Yeah, it's okay, Laura. I woke up early today. Usually wake up at 1 p.m. Dude, you need to uh, address your sleep schedule. What time do you go to sleep? Like 4 a.m.? Six AM? Yeah, dude, that's uh it's not good. Mrs. Alford? Uh she was my fourth and fifth grade teacher. <coughs> well, <coughs> oh my bad. <laughs> yeah, really. Oh, uh, not that I wasn't yelling at you, Jacob. I was responding to Ethan here, but I, but we can't hear you. We or we could not anymore. <clears throat> I don't know what chicken wrong. nuggets. Do you guys want anything? I don't think anyone. Well, yeah, you could bring me some. <laughs> I'll get all the sleep I need. I got you, dude. Yeah, I get it, Mr. Jonas. I understand. Uh, yeah, so, um, we got dino nuggets or regular nuggets? Dino. Uh, so guys, <laughs> so, uh, last week I said activity two. Um, I meant activity four. I tried to edit it in the YouTube video, but I, like, obviously there was no activity two last week. Um, so, yeah. Uh, you're supposed to do activity four, which is the summary. Okay, guys, uh, we're going to get started now. I don't know how long this one's going to go. I might end up talking a lot is what might end up happening. No. I'll tell you the activity at the end, guys. My AP test is today, so I might have to leave. Uh, that's okay, Reagan. Uh, you can always catch up on, on the YouTube. Uh, but if you do leave, good luck. Uh, you better go get that five or else. Everyone who has to, who has to leave, you better get those fives. Okay, <clears throat> let us begin. Where's the chat? Let me see the chat. I want chat. Okay. So guys, uh, welcome to IS6, where we talk about ecology again, uh, but more we're focusing in on how humans have screwed up the planet. Um, which is a common thing that we talk about uh, in the world today. Uh, some people listen, some people don't. Uh, but we're going to just try and spit the straight facts to you, okay? Man, look at all these people coming in still. So. All right, so let's start with the review. So first we have, you talked about ecology, right? Uh, and IS1. I wasn't there, but uh, Mr. Jonas is a zoology teacher, so I'm sure that he gave you all of the information in detail, and you all remember it because you are all bright and bushy-eyed students. So ecology is a study of interactions between organisms and their environments. An ecosystem is a system that includes all living organisms, in an area as well as its physical environment. So it's biotic factors and it's abiotic factors. And all of these things function together as a unit. 
talk about biodiversity. It's the number of variation of living organisms, both plant and animal, found in the given area is important for the health of the ecosystem, right? So you want an ecosystem to have a large amount of biodiversity. And we're not talking about like uh, how we talked genetic diversity in, uh, in genetics, right? Where you're just thinking, oh, rabbits need to have a bunch of different offspring with a bunch of different people, different rabbits. So there's a bunch of different rabbits. We're talking about, oh, there needs to be rabbits. There needs to be uh, like deer. There needs to be tigers, lions, and bears. Did it in the wrong order, but doesn't matter, right? You need a large amount of different organisms in an ecosystem. So plants and animals to be healthy. And events that can change the number of organisms in the ecosystem. So there's density dependent factors, right? So competition, predation, parasitism, and disease. So these are the things that are dependent on how dense the population is. So competition happens when there's so much competing for so little things. Uh, predation is when like the predators are eating the prey. All right, so you got like owls eating mice, things like that. Uh, parasites are density dependent. So is disease, especially like let's think about right now in the pandemic. Disease is density dependent. And the reason we're all stuck inside is because if we were all out in school today, particularly, we would all be together and spreading the disease and then we'd all die. Um, yeah, fun stuff. So density dependent factors, you think things that when the population is close together and how big the population is. Density independent doesn't matter about how much of a thing there is. Uh, it just is gonna happen. So natural disasters, seasonal cycles, and human activities, okay? So when we enact our will upon an ecosystem, that's density independent. Because we're not doing it just because, oh, look, there's like 4,000. I don't know who you are. Two, two, three, eight, six, eight, eight, seven. Let's see if you change your name. So we don't care about if there's like 5 million rabbits in a population uh, or in an ecosystem, if we're gonna go build a housing development on there, we're building a housing development because we wanna build the housing development, right? So that's human activities are density independent. And then also in ecology systems have organized parts that interact to move matter and energy around. So you have inputs and outputs. So Earth has four primary subsystems. You have the geosphere, the atmosphere, the hydrosphere, and the biosphere. Okay. <clears throat> so this is a good showing of what each of them are, right? So the atmosphere is the air. It's what's up there, right? You're talking about weather and stuff like that. The biosphere is everything as a whole, okay? The lithosphere is the earth and the hydrosphere is the water. Um, hydrosphere is probably, and atmosphere, probably easier to remember. Lithosphere might not be as easy, but yeah. <clears throat> and then we went to IS2 which is the movement of matter and energy, which is photosynthesis and cellular respiration. Matter, it occupies space made of atoms, so solid, liquid, gases, and all things are made or of matter or various elements. So anything that's a thing, it's made of matter, right? Air is, is matter. We're, we're breathing stuff in. We're not breathing nothing in. Otherwise, we'd be suffocating. And I do not recommend that. <clears throat> energy is the ability to do work or produce change. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. It is changed from one form to another. So an example is solar to chemical, or when you're using your energy 
right? You're using chemical energy and you're transferring it into heat or thermal energy, right? That's kind of how energy tracks a lot. The main source of energy on Earth is the sun. Um, it's like a big battery, right? And it's giving us all of this energy. Photosynthesis and cellular respiration transfer and transform matter and energy. So matter is in the form of carbon, oxygen, hydrogen. The energy stored in the bonds of molecules, right? So what you do with the, so like if you get glucose, I heard that if the sun came down to earth, we won't know for five seconds. No, if the sun came down to earth, we would be vaporized immediately. So, I mean, technically that's right. We wouldn't know because we'd just be instantly vaporized. So that'd be fun. Um, anyways, energy stored in the bonds of molecules transformed from CO2 and H2O into C6, H12O6, and O2. So, right, that's photosynthesis. You're taking carbon dioxide and water and you're just smashing them together. And then you get sugar and oxygen. And then the cellular respiration, you're taking that sugar and you're taking that oxygen and you're breaking apart the bonds to take that sweet, sweet energy. And then you can start doing things like run around in your house and annoy your parents or run around outside and not annoy your parents. I don't know what else kids do these days. Video, video games. I do those too. Don't worry. <clears throat> Didn't that happen with nuclear bombs? I heard they evaporate every single thing. Yeah. So when you're in the, so with nuclear bombs, when you're in the, the um the center radius of it like the immediate vicinity you are instantly vaporized because it's so hot um so like if you're gonna die from a nuclear bomb that's where you'd want to be you wouldn't even know <clears throat> i clean cook and do homework all night that's good Alora. very good that's good use of your energy i do work with my energy. I should really start exercising. Anyways, moving on. So as you can see from this diagram, diagram, di diagram, photosynthesis, uh, you, you get this stuff and then that goes into the mitochondria and you do respiration, you get ATP and then it's just like a cycle. Okay. Again, this is all review until we get to the new stuff. I might be talking too much for the review, but, you know, we got 45 minutes. We're fine. You're not taking notes. You're just enjoying the ride, you know? So, in IS3, we talked about evidence of evolution. So there's natural selection, right? Populations, not individuals, change over time in response to changes in the environment. So, not... So a single thing, a single animal isn't going to change over time, right? Like, or in, in the drastic ways of evolution. I am not going to evolve. This isn't Pokemon, right? We're not going to evolve and become something completely different. But the human race could change over time and become a completely different species. So here are the four postulates. First, you have overproduction. Organisms produce more offspring than the ecosystem can support. Um, rabbits are real good at doing this. Rabbits make like millions of babies. Maybe not millions for one rabbit, but... Wait, what, what do you mean we're not, Breeze? Oh, oh, that we're not going to evolve? Yeah. Uh, the, like, I'm not going to evolve from Mr. Cabral to like Mr. Cabralicus or something, right? To a different species from like a homo sapien, homo sapien to a uh, homo sapien ultra or something. God, I play Pokemon a lot and you'd think I'd come up with better names. Um, but homo sapiens might evolve 
as a whole to become a homo sapien ultra right this is more like digimon i guess this is how it's going anyways overproduction rabbits make a lot of babies okay because of this there's a lot of variation or different traits within that population there's a lot of different rabbits with a lot of different variations um and then all these rabbits they fight to the death not literally but they're fighting for resources like food territory and the ability to make more rabbits okay <clears throat> So they compete, and then the ones that survive are the best rabbits, rabbits prime, rabbits ultra, okay? And they have some variation or traits that give them an advantage when they're competing with all these other rabbits, all their brothers and sisters that they've slain. And that allows them to survive to reproductive age and pass on these traits that they have. Okay. Over time, these beneficial traits that they have are going to show up more often because these are the ones that are surviving and the ones that aren't obviously have traits that suck where they are. Um, and we call this change over long periods of time evolution. Okay. Uh, you can also see like, if you remember the moth thing, right? the moth uh it wasn't an experiment but like the moth example if you guys talked about that uh there was these moths in an industrial area and over time it shifted to the black moths were pretty predominant and the white moths weren't because they could blend in with the soot and like the the animals that eat them couldn't see the black ones because of the soot and then the plant shut down no more soot so the lighter colored moths were surviving more because the black ones were sticking out. Yes, exactly, Ethan. Yeah. Um, so if we were to assume that happened over thousands of years, right, perhaps it would be two different species of moths then, right, instead of just one with a variation. Um, they would always be black and they'd have some other things that would help them survive <clears throat> so here's another examples uh you're gonna hear some like i i love talking about evolution guys um i wasn't around for it with you guys i just i love talking about it so here there's giraffes and over time the short neck giraffes um died out and the long neck giraffes got longer uh this is reminiscent of i don't know if Mr. Jonas talked to you about this guy named Lamarck. I think his name was Lamarck, who believed that uh, evolution happened because the species just kind of like with giraffes, they just stretched their necks out longer, and then they passed on the trait that they created by stretching their neck out, um, which was obviously wrong. Okay, uh, I'm missing a finger, right? I'm not going to pass on my missing finger to my child because my finger was chopped off in my life. Uh, so that's a flaw of that side of evolution, but I just like talking about him. John Baptist Lamarck, yeah. <clears throat> How did he get chopped off? Well, I was feeding a giraffe, you see, at the zoo, and I got a little close. And they give you some lettuce, right, to feed these giraffes, but it's its tongue just wrapped around my finger and then chopped it off. They have, like, really, uh, really sharp tongues. It's not true. They don't have sharp tongues. But anyways, uh, that's my favorite misconception of evolution. Um, and if we were in evolution, I'd probably take a little bit more time to talk about it, but we must move on. <clears throat> inheritance of traits okay uh this is when i came in so we talked about this in detail right so populations with variations in their gene pool are more often to able to withstand selective pressures 
since some of the individuals will have phenotypes that are advantageous in the given environment. What does it mean? It means that, remember, we have overpopulation so that you have variation within the species, within the population. Some of these are going to be better at surviving than others, okay? So variation in gene pool are differences that are genetically based. They can be passed on, okay? Selective pressures are changes in the environment that organisms must deal with and adapt to, okay? Phenotypes are the traits that our genes code for. For instance, the genotype of BB would code for a phenotype of brown eyes. Remember, phenotypes are the outward appearance. Genotypes are what you have inside you. Sometimes these phenotypes are advantageous and give the organism competitive edge. Having a longer neck allows giraffes to reach food in higher trees. There are no trees, only shrubs. Having a longer neck might be detrimental because then you got to put your neck all the way down to get that branch while. Um, while a giraffe with like a short stubby neck could just walk up to the bush and just start chomping it, right? <clears throat> okay, traits must be genetic so they can be passed on to offspring. So if a trait isn't genetic, which isn't a thing, it, it can't be passed on, right? New traits are introduced through mutations Random or caused by mutagens and processes during sexual reproduction, crossing over an independent assortment. So, theoretically, again, we, we go back into genes, right? Theoretically, guys, why are we talking about piranhas? We're, we're moving on. <clears throat> so, theoretically, if you think about it, outside of mutations, whatever's in the gene pool is just going to be there, right? But because of mutations, you can get new things that come in. Um, and the beneficial mutations, the ones that are, that are good, will eventually be selected for, and that causes change through that. Okay, then we go into IS-5 are like disorders like a mutation in traits or the DNA? Yes. Disorders are, are mutations. Yeah, uh, and usually they, they start as mutations and then the ones that, are, that have persisted are just genes now, right? Um, we, we went through this in, de in detail during genetics, we need to move on, like ADHD, Down syndrome. Uh, Down syndrome is definitely a mutation. I, that doesn't get passed down. Or if it does, I, I don't think it, I don't think it does. Uh, if anyone who had Down syndrome for their genetic disorder is in the chat, please correct me if I am wrong. Oh, I moved on too fast. Okay, cell structure, function, and growth. This is what we just covered, right? So cell division, you make new cells to accommodate growth, repair, and reproduction. Cell division uh, that makes identical copies of bodied cells is mitosis, and unique copies is called meiosis, and that's for uh, sex cell generation, okay? Protein synthesis is how we take the DNA in us, we take that DNA, and we turn it into proteins that create us, right? Errors in DNA, which are called mutations, can create incorrect dysfunctional proteins that alter the way an organism functions. So that's how you're going to get your disorders, or that's, you know, all the different things. Um, like celiac disease, uh, you're not producing a certain enzyme, right, that, that makes it so you can't have gluten. Um, and that sucks. Homeostasis is the interaction between systems to maintain balance within yourself, right? So cells, tissues, organs, and organ systems work together to maintain our internal chemical and physical balance. So we've gone from this giant microcosm scale ecology, right? And we've gone 
one at a time until we've gotten to this little tiny minutia within. Wait, can the mutations also cause like, for example, mutations? No. That's because of the radi that's radiation burns. The mutations that are going to happen in uh in in causes of radiation uh is is like more disorders or uh a lot of them are just unable to have unable to have children. Okay. So here's the homeostasis stuff. Here's mitosis and meiosis. We just went over this. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. So let's we're, we're going to take this stuff this cool stuff that we've learned over the past year. And we're going to use it to understand the impact of humans and climate change. So how we're affecting the environment and how we're causing climate change. OK? So IS6, that's what we're on, the last one. Ecosystem stability and the response to climate change. So vocab. Renewable resource, so a renewable resource is a natural resource that can be replaced at the same rate at which it is consumed. So when you think of renewable resources, you gotta think wind energy, solar energy, um, I think hydro energy is in that same boat, uh, but we don't use it anymore because it's not as efficient. But that's usually when you're like doing the, the wind, the, the little turbine thing with the water. A non-renewable resource is a resource that cannot be remade when they say are used up, or ones that if they can be made, it's gonna take like thousands of years to do it, right? So think fossil fuels like oil or coal. All that stuff, um, it was made over thousands of years. We can't just replace it, right, when, when we use it up. It, it'll take another thousands of years to make any of them. Climate change is the long-term alteration of a temperature and normal weather patterns in a place. At this time in your life, I'm sure you've heard of climate change, right? Um, but mostly when we're talking about climate change, we're talking about how, well, I mean, you're probably experiencing this now, right? Like a week, maybe two weeks ago, was it hot as balls in your house? Because it was hot as balls in my house. Um, and it's pretty much summer already outside of like today and yesterday, I'd say. It's pretty much summer already, right? Um, you're running the AC already. It's only May. It should still be spring. Because I have them, Sebastian. Anyways, also, I'm a science teacher. I should know how hot they are. They're like 90-ish degrees. They're, they're, below, they're below your... Um, your internal body temperature just a little bit though anyways it's hot right climate change it hasn't i look you guys are all like 14 15 um when i was when i was like 10 and you guys were just getting born okay it, it wasn't this hot in may it was still like 80 degrees 70 degrees i'm sure when mr jonas was growing up it was probably still 60 degrees. <clears throat> Maybe not. I don't know. I might be exaggerating there. Anyways, climate change. Alteration of temperature and normal weather patterns in a place. Okay? And the greenhouse effect uh, is the Earth's atmosphere traps solar radiation because of the presence of certain gases which causes temperatures to rise. So our atmosphere is flooded with CO2 right now, right? Lots of CO2. Uh, and the thing about that is that the solar energy can get in, but because of how much CO2 there is, it can't necessarily get out. So it's just trapping all this energy here, all this heat. And that's the greenhouse effect. So if you're thinking like a regular greenhouse with flowers and stuff like that, <laughs> Mr. Jonas says when he was a kid, the continents hadn't moved yet, so everything was the same. <laughs> um, well, I mean, 
Yeah, Pangea was uh was a great place, wasn't it? <laughs> so if you think about a greenhouse, right? I don't know if any of you have seen greenhouses, but usually they're paneling. It's it's green, right? And it's it's doing that so that when the heat gets in, it can't easily escape. So if you've ever gone into a greenhouse, it's like hot and muggy, right? If you've seen that old uh the old uh the the the, the Frosty the Snowman movie, right? The one, the animated one, I don't know if any of you have seen it, but uh, near the end of the movie, he walks into a greenhouse to escape from the magician that wants to steal his hat back. <laughs> Mr. Jonas grew up in Richmond, so it was always overcast, couldn't afford sunlight. Ain't, ain't that the truth? Um, anyways, the Frosty the Snowman movie, uh, he went into a greenhouse and he just melted and died because of it, right? I think. It, it's been a while since I've seen it. <clears throat> Anyways, greenhouses are hot. Our world is going through this greenhouse effect, which is also making our world hot. So if you remember, we just talked about energy. It cannot be created or destroyed, just, just like matter. Whatever we got of the energy in the universe, that, that's what we got. Uh, and that can get into like a bigger discussion of like the eventual heat death of the universe because the universe is expanding. So there's not as much energy or like heat to heat the entire universe. And then it's just eventually going to go kaput. But that's that's more of like a physics thing. <clears throat> We're talking about biology here. So energy converts from one form to another. So you got chemical energy that goes into motion. You got radiant, turns into chemical, chemical into motion. Look at, look at, this is just the comparison of like how energy transfers from one another, okay? <clears throat> so, Earth has an energy budget. The sun gives us an allowance, right? So generous. What a great parent. Uh, my parents did not give me an allowance when I was growing up. Uh, I had to make my money the old-fashioned way umpiring on the weekends and during the week so that I could um, buy a car eventually. Anyways, so you're like me, Chrissy. You're going to have to work for it too. It's okay. <clears throat> Let's say it's not, yeah, anyways. Is there an end to the universe? If not, what's out there? If there is an end, what's it look like? That always messes with me. There is an end to the universe. The universe isn't infinite right? It is expanding, but it, it isn't infinite. Um, I do not know what the end of the universe looks like. Um, it, it, though, like contemplating it, it's like, what, what if it's just like how the people thought the world was, right? Back in the day when it was flat, those flat earthers, please, no one's a flat earther here. Um, you're not allowed to be. You fail this class if you are. But <laughs> um, what, what if it's just, you know, you just like go off the edge of the universe and then you just cease to exist or something, right? Um, or there's just like a wall there. It's like the Truman Show. Uh, you just go far enough and you just hit a wall of, and it's slowly expanding wall. But anyways, so we get an energy budget from the sun. We get, we get an allowance. Not all of this energy is going to reach the Earth's atmosphere or surface. Uh, some is reflected by the clouds or the atmosphere, right? Um, it's like if you even just think about uh, UV light, right, ultraviolet, some of that's getting reflected by our ozone layer. Uh, that's why that's why we talk about the ozone layer a lot because the ozone layer is protecting us from like the harmful radiation of the sun. So that a lot of that radiation is getting reflected out. It's not even reaching us. The energy that does come through is going to be absorbed by the atmosphere or the surface of the earth. 
and then moves around through convection. So like the warm air rises up. Evaporation, okay, so like the heat gets absorbed by the water, and the water evaporates, and then, it, and then it moves up into clouds, and then the clouds cry, and we get more water. Like that's the, that's the water cycle, right? Or in the form of latent heat, latent heat. So, energy exits Earth's surface, clouds, and atmosphere. Okay, so the energy comes in, but then it also goes out, right? We're, it's not like all the energy comes in and it doesn't have an exit point. Uh, the energy comes in and it also exits out. So it's, a, it's a, like a flowing motion, right? We get the energy we need, the energy leaves. The Earth's energy budget is vital to establishing our climate. As long as the energy input and output are the same, the Earth's climate is stable. Okay, so we want it to be the same. We want the energy to come in and we want the energy to go out. We don't want the energy to come in and stay. That's bad. So, you got the incoming radiation and then you got the radiation, the reflected energy. Some of it's absorbed by the atmosphere. I can't see all of this picture because of all the things in the way. Uh. Okay. We do by atmosphere and cloud. So like this is just a picture of how some of it's absorbed and then some of it's going out, right? And I'm sure if you take all of these numbers together, in theory, you would have an equal amount coming in and an equal amount going out. Actually, just looking at it, look at. So this is the big incoming radiation, right? 341. 102 is taken out. And then outgoing radiation is 239 as well. Add those together, that's 341. So this is just showing incoming out, incoming radiation is equal to the radiation out. That's what we want. However, the greenhouse effect is screwing with this, okay? This, it occurs naturally. Solar energy passes through atmosphere to warm up the earth. The greenhouse gases such as CO2, methane, that's helping to trap the heat in the atmosphere to heat up our oceans, land and atmosphere, right? So we're trying to absorb some of that heat and that's what the CO2 and all of that is doing. That's our atmosphere works so well. Um, like if you go to Mars, that doesn't have, a, well, Mars might have an atmosphere, but it doesn't have as much CO2, right? So it's also farther from the sun. So I guess it's colder because of that. But either way, it's not as hot there. Um, humans have been increasing the amount of greenhouse gases in our atmosphere, causing more heat to be trapped, leading to global warming. So we have this natural amount of CO2 right, and methane in our atmosphere that's helping keep some of this heat in. Humans as a whole have been putting more CO2 and methane and all of these things into the air, which is increasing the amount in the atmosphere, which means more heat is getting trapped on the earth. And as a result, less is leaving. So with our energy budget, we're getting like, 100 coming in, and what we want is 100 going out, but let's say even just a minuscule amount, right? 99 going out, that's still bad, but we, it's probably more like 90 going out. So we're still keeping 10 in, which is not what we want. And that 10 just keeps going up and up and up until eventually um, it's always summer. and I don't know about you, but like, sure, I like getting off during summer, but I do not like being hot during summer. It's not a fun time. Summer is my least favorite because of that. Um, and I don't have the money to go to Australia. Just, just, I just don't. 
Anyways, climate change impacts a wide range of health outcomes. The next slide illustrates the most significant climate change impacts. So rising temperatures, more extreme weather, rising sea levels, and increasing carbon dioxide levels. Okay? There are effects on exposures and the subsequent health outcomes that can result from these changes in exposures. Oh my God, please let me make this smaller. Okay, so in this is just on human health, right? So we have rising temperatures, we have more extreme weather. So like we've been having more hurricanes recently. Um, well, Florida has been having more hurricanes recently. Um, right, rising sea levels, um, because of rising temperatures, the ice caps are melting. So we get more sea, rising sea levels, increasing CO2 levels, right? So you're getting extreme heat, severe weather, air pollution, changes in vector ecology, increasing allergens, water quality impacts, water and food supply impacts, environmental degradation. And then there's all these other things that are happening to humans on the micro level because of that. Okay. What the hell? Ethan, what are you doing? Okay. All right. So this is the last slide. Okay. This is, frankly, it's, it's bad, right? Um, this section, uh, you guys are actually like, it, it sucks for you guys because you're supposed to do a project where you would research different solutions on climate change, right? Yes, Isaac. There's there's always going to be temperature fluctuation. That's just the natural that's just how it naturally goes, but we are speeding it up. We're speeding up this process and um I like it's it's going to it's going to it's wiping out a lot of biodiversity right now, right? Because as the temperatures rise, less animals are going to be able to deal with it. Um and what might happen, you know, we're just going to wipe out our species faster. Okay. Does that mean that all life is going to go away? No, because there's obviously going to be, well, theoretically, there's enough biodiversity that some animals would survive, right? But we're heading towards uh, another mass extinction event, which is the end of a, uh, God, era, epoch. One of the one of the things, period. I'm gonna have to take away your chat. Uh, okay. So. Yeah, yeah. So we're we're heading towards another extinction event because of all this climate change. And that's just it's just not it's it's just Ethan, you you need to stop while I'm trying to finish here. <clears throat> it's just not a good thing. Right? Isaac brings up a good point. But we are speeding it up. Uh, and we could stop it. It might be too late now because we'd have to get the whole human race on board. But hopefully it's not, and you can always do your own part. But you guys are getting kind of screwed because you're supposed to be – when do you think the extinction would occur? Um, I don't know when it could occur. A lot of people are thinking in the next 50-ish years. I, I don't know, though. 
Um, anyways, you guys would in this section would normally be looking up solutions and how to lessen the impact. Um, but you can't because of how it's going right now. Um, so thank you for joining. If any of you have questions, you can wait till the end, but, or yeah, I'll still be here for another 12 minutes. The, for those of you who are here, and who watch on YouTube, the activity you're gonna do this week is activity two. Uh, it, it, actually, this time it's activity two, right? There's one, two, three, four questions on it. And then just tell me something you learned in a question from the lecture this week, okay? Oh, God. <laughs> Hold on. There we go. All right. <clears throat> yeah, Anthony can still get credit. That's fine. But uh, I hope you guys learned something. Uh, this was a uh, fun lecture for me. It was like 50 minutes, so that, that was cool. That's cool. Although, maybe not for you guys who just listen to me talk for 50 minutes. But uh, I hope you guys have a good day. Yes? Hello? Mr. Cabral? Yes, Talia. What's the assignment? Activity two in the packet. Hello? Yeah. Can you hear what's me? The assignment? Okay. And then what's. Yeah. Do we have to do like a question or something? Yeah, yeah. Question from the lecture and something you learned. Okay. Thank like you. Normal. Yep. Thanks, Talia. Later. Later. <laughs> have a good one. <clears throat> what part of you the packet too. are we doing again today? Activity two. Bye, Chrissia. <clears throat> What books? So I have a lot of fantasy books. The Wheel of Time, um, a lot of Brandon Sanderson. Do you know when my uh, Diallo, I'm going to put it in later today. Probably like after, after this, I'm going to go to the school to put it in. I'm going to host a huge Minecraft server and that's how we're going to do the next class. I mean, you can try. I won't it's join it. It's very expensive, but I can do it. Yeah, I got it. I got it, DLO. Um, you did weeks one through four, right? Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to put that in. I just, I don't have access to the, uh, to the grade book unless I physically go into the classroom. I should use Discord for class. Mm, nope. Let's see. Let me, let me just stop.